Now I am very pleased to bring to the stage our colleague Michele Barbato from UC Davis, who's also the director of the Citrus Climate Initiative. You heard from him yesterday, and he will present the Edge in Tech Athena Award for Academic Leadership. Michele. Thank you very much. Um, I hope everybody can hear me. Um, so today is uh, my privilege and uh, my honor to introduce uh, the 2022 winner of the Athena Award for Academic Leadership, uh, Dr. Teresa Maldonado. Uh, Dr. Maldonado is uh, the Vice President of Research and Innovation for the UC system. Before coming to UC, she worked at uh, at and Bell Laboratories, was a professor and the Dean of Engineering at the University of Texas at El Paso, was Associate Vice Chancellor for Research at the Texas A&M University System, and was Program Director and Division Director at the National Science Foundation. She has uh, a unique background with high-profile administrative roles in higher education, in government, and industry. She is an inspiring leader who has championed the underrepresented groups in engineering in a sustained manner throughout her entire career, with a focus on innovation, engineering and education, broadening participation, and workforce development. I have only three minutes, so I can only scratch the surface of all of uh, Dr. Maldonado's accomplishments. Uh, thus, I'll, uh, I'll focus on the fact that uh, she is uh, a leader in the most literal sense of the word uh, by being uh, the first in so many different ways. She is uh, a first generation college graduate, the first Mexican American and fourth female to earn a PhD in the School of Electrical and Computer Engineering at Georgia Tech, the first female NSF division director for the Engineering Education and Centers Division, and the first female and first Hispanic Vice President for Research and Innovation for the UC system. But to me, the most amazing part is that she accomplished all of this while being a single parent. And uh, with this, uh, I'd like uh, to please welcome our uh, award winner, Dr. Teresa Maldonado. Thank you so much, Dr. Barbato. Uh, you're such a wonderful colleague. I also wish to thank Citrus and the Beneteau Institute for hosting this amazing symposium. I heard many of the presentations yesterday and also thank you for this tremendous honor. I really appreciate this beautiful carved wooden piece of art that you sent to me um, in recognition for this recognition. Today actually marks my two year anniversary at UC Office of the President. I was in the office for three business days before we went shelter in place. So that's my context as I move forward in this role. So I, today I'd like to talk about my personal context and how I view my role, talk a little bit about what I actually do for UC, and then offer a challenge to you. So for context, we, it's very important to understand and acknowledge. Our context is how all of us view the world. It's how all of us see problems and challenges, and it's how we imagine solutions. So what is my context? It certainly informs how I do my job. My parents were born and raised in small towns on the Texas-Mexico border. My father was poor and my mother grew up in abject poverty. Spanish was their first language. They never moved from the border as they were growing up. But my dad enlisted in the Air Force right after high school, and he did his basic training close to my mother's hometown, which is where they met. So the Mexican-American culture is the, the home in which the culture I had at home. But my upbringing was different. Because of my father being in the Air Force, I was born in California at Travis Air Force Base. I attended 14 schools K through 12, including four high schools. And we moved to middle Georgia nine months after Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated. I was in the sixth grade then, so you can imagine what that scenario was like. I was a new student my senior year in Austin, Texas. So in the home, I had the context of the small town, Texas-Mexico border culture, and outside of the home, I had a different context than my parents. I am their oldest child and their oldest daughter with all the expectations that entailed in this culture. So there were tensions from my upbringing 
and my aimless internal drive to do something in my life. So I attended a community college back in Georgia and uh, there I experienced um, the vilest professor I've ever had for calculus at, as he shouted to the three female students in this class that we belonged in the kitchen and not in his classroom. In the end, however, because I busted the curve all year long, he became my strongest advocate and suggested that I try Georgia Tech. So I did transfer there and I picked electrical engineering because the undergraduate advisor actually smiled. Back then, the undergraduate enrollment in electrical engineering was only one to one and a half percent female. And as Mikkel said, I'm the first in my family to earn a degree. So um, graduate school was not in the cards. I just wanted to get a job, but I ended up getting hired at AT&T Bell Laboratories. They required a master's degree and they paid for it. So I said, why not? But I met my future PhD advisor in the master's program. I did go back to work for a few years, but he continued to write me letters. This was way before email. And I agreed to come back for the PhD. I'd like to mention something about socioeconomic challenges. Poverty defines a person deeply. It defined my mother's outlook in her life until her death six years ago. And so I'm certain many of you in the audience have these racial, ethnic, and socioeconomic culture experiences in your home too. And as an academic leader, we need to be mindful of our students' contacts. So what do I do? Well, I, I am honored to lead the uh, an amazing research enterprise. And uh, so what I do is work with 10 campuses, three national labs, National Reserve System, UC Health, Ag and Natural Resources. And I get to work with all disciplines. Well, what I'd like to do is talk about a couple of uh, big efforts, initiatives that we have ongoing already. The first is in climate resilience. As many of you know, we hosted for the first time three wildfire symposia last summer. And we did this in response to the state agency challenges to see how UC could become partners in their efforts to combat wildfire. We did such a good job in conveying, and Mikkel was a speaker as well as Dr. Aiken, who spoke yesterday from Lawrence Los Alamos. Um, we, in, we developed a trust from the agencies and they invited us to submit a proposal to the governor and climate resilient communities. The governor liked the proposal and we have $185 million in the queue right now, the state legislature to support UC research for the first time. So we are able to pull our disciplines together to do something important for the state. The second project I'd like to highlight that we're, that's ongoing is diversity, equity, inclusion, and innovation and entrepreneurship. Five of our campuses are HSIs, but we asked the question with the COVID-19 shutdown, how are our startup companies and small businesses doing? And, and to what extent are underrepresented minorities leading these entities? So we launched the Inclusive Innovation and Equitable Entrepreneurship Initiative, and we're taking a deep dive into why we do not have a diverse culture within our UC innovation ecosystem. We are going to change the missing millions, lost trillions narrative. The fact that underrepresented minorities are not in this space has led to $16 trillion losses in the US GDP in the last 20 years. So uh, we are in the middle of that initiative. I'd like to close by challenging you. Janelle Monet's character in Hidden Figures, she had to go to court in order to take engineering classes at night as a black woman. The white judge um, was challenging her and she did her homework about him and learned that he was the first in his family to serve in, in the armed forces and the first in his family to attend university. Because she did her homework and because she was polite, he approved and authorized her to take engineering classes and became the first black female engineer at NASA. So what impact would you like to make? Do you ask questions? Do you challenge your assumptions? Do you dare to think differently? Are you afraid to fail? This turtle on my lapel was given to me by my NSF staff when I left because I stuck my neck out for them. I thought that was a real honor. Are you, real, are you ready to stick out your neck? Thank you. 
Thank you, Teresa. That was a wonderful uh, set of remarks. Thank you, Michaela, for your nomination and congratulations uh, to Vice President Maldonado. Your personal story is so inspiring for the challenges that you have overcome and the rich lived experience that you bring to your work here at UC. We really appreciate your leadership. Thank you.